Well, we are on. It's been a long time since we've had our podcast, and it's been a real long time since we've done the celebrity stories, as we like we call them. This is the end of the year. We're in December. I look out the window, and it's overcast in uh, California terms, of course. If this were where I come from, Chicago, we'd be in the middle of the, of the summer. Uh, it's a, it's a, oh, it's so cold out there. I think it's in its 60s, man. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> okay. So you are going to brief me because I have not looked at any of the stories you're going to talk about, but we've got some celebrity stories that we need to catch up on. And I assume, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Anthony, uh, that these are the best you could come up with. Well, a lot has happened since the last time that we've talked. Um, okay. We're going to talk about some of the things that have been happening in the uh, entertainment world. Um, we love following celebrity stories, <laughs> obviously. It's kind of fun, kind of exciting to see what else uh, the, the people on the other side are living like. You know, it was really surprising to me when uh, we started the celebrity stories, and we've done I think, five or six of these already, how much well-educated, intellectual people like yourselves and others in the firm, follow this stuff. And I can't tell you that I'm not a snob because, I mean, sometimes I look at it, I, you know, I, but you folks are, like, really well-versed in this stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay. I, you know what? And there's some good movies out, but by, by the way, you know, there's a movie that's called, um, I think it's, it's the Gucci story. I'm not sure what right. it is. House, yeah. House of Gucci. House of Gucci. So yeah. have, you, have you seen that yet? No, no and I would like to. I know. I'm saving it for the theaters. Mm-hmm, okay. Definitely. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, El- El- Alhambra Theater, uh-huh. uh, it's playing, and, you know, if you get in there, there's nobody in the theater. I mean, there's maybe two other people in there, and you get this big screen, you watch it, and it's a, it's a really good movie. We, yeah. I did see it. One of the things I missed the most about the pandemic was just being able to go to the theater and watch a movie, get a popcorn, you know? Yeah. Oh, definitely. So excited to start doing that again as things start reopening, yeah. Well, unfortunately, some of the theaters closed down. Yeah, You know, like a, a lot of businesses, but there's they're still there. If you go there, it's inexpensive, and I, the doctor recommends it. You know, <laughs> I, I got to tell you before we get into the celebrity stories, I was talking to um, somebody at the Chamber of Commerce uh, about a, I don't know a few days ago. Now this is a, a really s- smart guy, a guy that I think is a family man. Mm-hmm. Well, just he's an, he's an uh, is he an attorney? No, he's a, he's a uh, IT guy. But he, he revealed to me that he's having some emotional difficulties because of COVID. Mm, yeah. And I've been hearing that from a lot of different people. I mean, That's so right. much so that, I mean, he was saying, I think I need therapy because I'm getting um, anger, angry a lot easier. You yeah. know, I'm having these outbursts with bad traffic and stuff. So the doctor recommends it both of you, okay? Take some time away. I know that you want to work 24-7, <laughs> but don't do You know, in fact, it, uh, neither one of you were at the PBA holiday party, but... Uh, and I'm not calling you out on it or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Why weren't you there? Let's, let's put this on the airwaves, sure. okay? But, but I ran into a mediator. She will go unnamed, but she's one of my favorites. And she said that what happened during COVID uh, was very similar to what happened to me and others, is that you're at home. You got nothing else to do, so mm-hmm. why not continue working? Mm-hmm. You know, and she says she finds herself working seven days a week. Yeah. You know, and I know that you guys work a lot around the <laughs> clock, too, because I just know because I'm working and I'm communicating with you and stuff. But I think it's time that we, as well as everybody else, man, starts learning how to enjoy themselves again. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time you had a real weekend, you know, right. and stuff where you're not just like working, you know, nine hours or whatever, you know? Well, I, j- I just had a real weekend because I came back from Mexico City on Monday. What were you doing down there? So I, I needed to take a trip. For the same same reason as kind of pretty much what you said, I needed to change my. Did you go by yourself or did you bring your wife? I brought the wife. Okay. We went for two days. We ate a lot. We saw the city. Went to the museums. It was really really wonderful, and it was just so great to just be in a different city in a you know place where the language is different, the people are different. It sounds like fun. Food is great. Yeah, and it was uh, it was much much needed. So. Back to the office and ready to start working yeah. again. Yeah, I never, I never thought of because it was just a weekend. It's like a w- long weekend. Yeah, right? yeah, and it's totally doable. It's mm-hmm. like a three-hour flight um, from from here. Just three from hours. Here, yeah, about three three hours fifteen. I minutes went or so. over a weekend as well. It's the perfect amount of time. Yeah. you can definitely do longer. Uh, mm-hmm. There's so many things to see, and you can get out of the city a little bit. But you, it's definitely doable. In a, in well, the a weekend. two of you were kind of down there at the same time, or almost because you right. were just down there too. Well, I was in um, Baja, so oh, a little okay. bit. Uh, you know, just two hours from the border yeah. okay it's great like because there's it's just right next to us it's our it's our neighbor to the south and um it it really does feel like truly a, di- a different country in, in very much in so. a different continent right because yeah. it's so different there yeah the people are super friendly um they're very patient with non-english speakers i think i think 
even they are just kind of excited to see visitors again. Um, so traveling is something that I'm really looking forward to doing again on a fairly consistent basis. Um, it's just something that we haven't been able to do over the past year or so. So Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, the doctor right now writing the prescription. You're going to go <laughs> to the Alhambra Theater. You're going to watch this movie. Okay? All right. All right. So let's talk about some of the celebrities. And why don't we start off with you, Anthony? What are who are you going to cover? Well, I, mine are kind of related to each other. So um, you know, as we start thinking about coming out of the pandemic and people are able to host weddings again with people uh, and guests coming and cake and all that great stuff. Uh, Courtney Kardashian and Travis are starting to talk about getting married. Um, they have been dating in the public eye for, oh man, I want to probably say say five or six months now, um, which by all means is kind of a short period of time, but I guess to celebrities that's a long period of time. Okay, so. stop right there because you're <laughs> dealing with something. I don't know who Courtney is. I know the okay. Kardashian <laughs> family and Travis. I have no idea. He might so, he could be a truck driver, man. Yeah. From, you know, so who are these people? The, the Kardashian royal family rules over the United <laughs> States with an iron fist. No. Uh, their, <laughs> their White House in Calabasas. Exactly. <laughs> Kardashian family is uh, obviously of uh, keeping up with the Kardashians' fame. Okay. Um, I'm obviously. aware of that. Never seen one of those episodes. But yeah. I know. Okay, go, go ahead. <laughs> wildly famous. Wildly famous. Um, I think the show just stopped recently. Um, and uh, they're all kind of sort of doing their own thing right now. But Courtney is one of the Kardashian sisters. And um, she got into a relationship um, after leaving her previous um, partner uh, with uh, Blink-182, who was a band, Don. <laughs> uh, it was a punk rock band. Oh, okay. Thank you, because <laughs> I didn't a, know that either. He was a drummer for the punk rock band, okay. Blink-182. I used to listen to them all the time in high school. Um, and it's sort of a weird couple, but they make it work. Oh, I'm right? such a big fan of them. I yeah, uh, you see their pictures and you're just like, oh my goodness, it's so cute. They got this kind of like rebellious because Travis Barker, he's got like tattoos from like his neck down and like Courtney Kardashian. I mean, I think she probably like bought into his style a little bit as a result. <laughs> she's a little more gothy. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it 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 works. Um, I think she's also older than him as well too, right? I think just slightly. Yeah. But they're also both parents. Um, they right. both seem to take that very seriously. Right. Um, so I think that is also. So so that's kind of an interesting point to jump in here. They're both parents. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we see that in a lot of our cases where right. you have folks that are of mixed marriages, like the Brady Bunch, you right. know, and stuff. And the dynamics is very challenging for, for these types of families, particularly when there's agitation with the exes on right. either one end or both ends, right? Right. So we, we see this a lot in split family dynamics. Um, you know, paternity cases, you will usually have a new family member, step parent, um, step mother, step dad, uh, new parent in the picture. So. Um, these are all things they're going to have to start dealing with. How many kids do they have between them? I think um, it's six. Six, right? Woo, yeah, woo, that's six. the Brady Bunch. But if yeah. you're going to look at social media, everything seems to be going great. Yeah. Well, come on. I you, know. You I know. <laughs> I know. You but only post the good stuff, right? His yeah. kids are a little bit older too, so I don't know if that is yeah. helpful or well, harder. The, well, the reason why I brought this up is um, one of the things I anticipate that they're going to start talking about are premarital agreements, right? Um, you know, Courtney obviously is is an heir to a very substantial fortune in the Kardashian estate, um, and Travis is also pretty successful on his own as a drummer. And maybe they're going to be start talking about um, how they're going to keep those assets separate from each other during the marriage in the event something potentially doesn't work out. So, so, so I want to talk factually and legally on yeah. this on this point right here. The factual part of it that I have is you say there's heir to the estate, and uh, you, I think both of you are too young to remember the O.J. Simpson trial, right? I don't remember the trial. You do. Yeah. Uh, well, you, were, you weren't even born, kid. I've, I, I've caught tell me up that. on podcasts. The, okay. the juice is loose. <laughs> well, you know, the Kardashian, the, the father was a good friend of O.J., right? and he was an attorney that wasn't practicing law. He, he made it in business somehow. Mm. So he was a successful man. But I think what's really interesting is if you looked at his probably wealth then compared to what their Kardashian family is now, he'd be a pauper. Yeah, oh, exactly. Right? exactly. That's amazing to me. Yeah. So, so you got you know her. I don't. I guess she's going to get wealth. She has it on her own, I suspect, because she's been on that show. I don't know anything about how they get paid, mm -hmm. but I do know that we're talking about po possibly the sister is worth a, a billion dollars or something. Two that sounds of them. about right. Yeah. 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 And and so. Who's wealthier, you know, between these two? And if they're so wealthy, do they need a premarital agreement? What do you What do you think? I think, I mean, the more wealthy you are, the more you're going to have an interest in protecting those assets from your potential um, division in a in a divorce proceeding, or the less likely you're going to want to be involved in a very tricky and nasty and extended divorce and having your finances 
you know, basically depl- displayed out for the public to see. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I think the more wealthy you are, the more you're thinking about, um, you know, trying to have a very locked tight premarital agreement before you uh, even walk when, down the even aisle. Even both of them are wealthy. Oh yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. To me, what, what I do is when people come to my office and they ask for a premarital agreement, I'm like, hey, what are your goals? Mm-hmm. And if it's just, I just want to know that what's mine is mine. Uh, I still think it's a good idea to get a premarital agreement because it solidifies in writing, you know, with you know s- signatures of both parties as that who owned what before the marriage. Right. Uh, there might be a laundry list uh, in the Kardashian family, right? Yeah, I, so. I, I would probably think so. So, <laughs> okay. and then the next one, um, where we're talking about prospective weddings. Now we actually have a wedding that is set. Um, Britney Spears, who is now free from her conservatorship, is planning on marrying. Uh, Sam Ishgari, I think they have a date that's set probably this month. Okay, who's Sam? You know, I actually don't know. I know who Brittany is. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've heard his name. Thrown Sam around. is one lucky dude that's been hanging around, you know, by the, <laughs> there. Oh, my God. Wow. So this brings up an interesting question, right? Because Britney Spears is now like, very famously uh, free from her conservatorship, and which means that she's able to make decisions on her own pertaining to her finances, pertaining to whether or not she gets married or not. Um, I'm anticipating the release of her from that conservatorship is probably one of the things that uh, drove them to go ahead and set that wedding date. Um, But not only that, uh, being free from a conservatorship means that you're able to execute your own legal documents and make decisions as to your own finances and whether they would be in your best interest or not. So that means she is now free to enter into a marriage uh, number one, but also free to execute a premarital agreement as well. Yeah, I kind of wish that we had Allie here because, <laughs> you know, we have somebody in our attorney that does conservatorships. And yeah. one thing that she's taught me, and Allie, uh, if you see this podcast, I hope correct me if, if I'm wrong here, <laughs> but there's different uh, types of conservatorships, right? And right. some of them take all the rights away from a person, and others are just financial. Mm-hmm. A, lot of, a lot of conservatorships, they allow social decisions still, right. and even the decision to get married and stuff. Yeah. Do you know anything about, was she precluded from even getting married? So, I believe so. Yeah, it was, oh my a, God. It was oh. a pretty intense oh. conservatorship, which was probably the reason why there was such a big push by An the outcry. public. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, people were saying she couldn't you know, even carry cash on her own. Uh, she couldn't have credit cards in her name. Oh my um, just very simple things that she says that now that she's free, she's able to do, and it just kind of feels like it's completely new to her. Um, you know, you think of this as, as someone, as an adult, uh, just discovering credit cards, discovering cash for the first time, because it was, she was pretty young when she got put into that conservatorship mm-hmm. to begin with. So she made a big point about being able to drive, or just how she she just wants to drive, yeah. um, and they wouldn't allow her. And so when the conservatorship was lifted, there were pictures of her driving, and it was just this you know big victory for her. But can you imagine not even being able to drive when you want? I mean, Britney Spears being freed from the conservatorship is probably one of the best things that happened in 2021, I would say. I think so. <laughs> so you, There's still a little bit of time you, you left. You sound but. so firm in your, <laughs> in your belief that she didn't need a conservatorship. I don't know anything about the case. I mean, I really yeah. don't. I do know that she was acting very bizarre mm-hmm. uh, many, many years ago as a rock star or whatever she is. Uh, and I also know that once when I went to court, there was this lady that was – uh, roller skating around in circles, free Britney, way before the hoopla. Right. And I'm like, what in the world are you doing there? You know, and stuff. And, uh, but, you know, it's it does seem like it was overkill. I mean, from what you're saying, I mean, yeah. to the point where, you know, you can't drive. I mean, come on. We can. I mean, we can have a whole podcast about I know. how the I could talk forever. How the, the music industry uh, uses and abuses artists and right. basically kind of forces them into early retirement. Um, but it's. I think just. Sticking to the the positive parts, um, Brittany is free and she's going to be marrying someone that she seems to have a very good relationship with, loves, and uh, that we should all can really be able to celebrate her for being that. Okay. Well, I, that, I wonder yeah. if she's going to produce any more music. I mean, was she precluded from doing that? Was no, she could... was forced to. Yeah, she was forced oh, to. okay. Yeah. She was contractually obligated to um, produce albums. She's spoken that she doesn't want to perform anymore, yeah. which is sad for us, but happy for her. Happy for her. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, I was hoping for a, like a Christmas jingle or something. <laughs> or something. We have enough of those. <laughs> okay. Let's move to the next uh, two. Okay. So I have an interesting case. Um, it is regarding Evan Rachel Wood from Westwood. I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> Westworld. Westworld. <laughs> and um, Jamie Bell, who um, he was famous for, uh, for Billy Elliot which came out a long time ago mm-hmm. when he was a kid. So they mm-hmm. had a child together. 
Um, Evan Rachel Wood pretty famously has accused her ex-boyfriend, Marilyn Manson, of just some pretty deplorable things, yeah. um, along with some other victims. Um, and there's a pending in criminal investigation. I think it may have even gone forward. There may be charges by now. Um, but essentially, she is afraid of Marilyn Manson um, and his followers. Uh, and I guess Marilyn Manson has made some threats against her and her child with Jamie Bell. Right. Jamie uh, well, Bell... <coughs> Allegedly made. Allegedly made. Allegedly you. made. Yes, you're right. Allegedly made. Um, important to note, Jamie and Evan are no longer together. Um, so it, she is fearful of basically being in Los Angeles where Marilyn Manson lives and where um, you know she's been threatened. So she took the child to Tennessee. Um, I'm using this more as a jumping off point about moveaways and ex-parties uh, because unfortunately, or fortunate, or it doesn't matter. We don't know what the custodial schedule mm-hmm. is. Um, however, once she moved to Tennessee, uh, Jamie Bell filed an ex party asking that she return the child back to Los Angeles um, and you know not allow not be allowed to live in Tennessee. Uh, she, uh, Evan filed a response basically saying there's um, no emergency for this ex party, which is something Don and I just dealt with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that brings up a good point that a lot of times we have clients who think what's going on in their life is, you know, this massive emergency. And it may feel that way, but the standard for the court is so much higher than. Well, let's let's talk about the, uh, what we just experienced. Was it last night? I'm losing track of all these cases I'm doing, <laughs> but, but it was just last night, right? Yes. So uh, we're not going to mention any names, but the circumstances are. Um, opposing party wants to take the child to Israel for the holidays for about 15 days. Um, and our client is saying, is not consenting to that at this point. They went on an ex party asking to be able to go to Israel and it was denied. As predicted. As predicted. Right. Um, it's not an emergency to go to Israel. Even if you had already planned it, even if you've already bought the tickets, it's not an emergency, which is one of the standards, and it doesn't pose um, any risk of imminent harm to the child not being able to go to Israel. It's unfortunate and it's sad, but it's not an emergency. And I think that's something even I sometimes forget. I'll have a client come in and tell me this horrible story and I'll think it's so unfair and I think we should just go in. And then I have to remind myself Mm -hmm. there's, you know, due process. There's a way that we do this and it's so everyone can be heard and the issues can be fully briefed. That's why it's such a high standard for ex party motions. Yeah, for child custody, there's two things that will prevail possibly in an ex party. One is when there's imminent threat that there's an abduction. You know, somebody's like headed towards the airport and they're going to leave for some country that's not part of the Hague Convention. And oh my gosh, you know, the court will probably listen to that case, mm-hmm. right? Number two is when there's imminent threat of danger, to, you know, yeah, harm, harm to the child. Having done this now for, you know, over 20 years, I could tell you that every December we get a flurry of yep. cases where people want to go in and, hey, you know, I want Christmas Day, yep. you know, and he's not letting me do that. And the orders are, are silent on mm-hmm. that. Or I want to go to Hawaii for our little vacation that we always took when we were together. Right. Now he's not letting me do that or she's not letting me go. You know, folks, don't even bother, mm-hmm. okay? You know, and I think maybe as a public service what we ought to do is put out a broadcast about June of every year and go, if you're going to be, like, filing these motions, make them now because they're going to be denied. As as someone who has been in court for the last, oh, what, three Christmas Eves? This year, fortunately, Christmas Eve is a federal holiday. Every other year it's not. But I will say this. Make no confusion about it. Christmas, Christmas Eve, Christmas holidays are not any more important than any other day of the week in the court's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, by the way, did you ever try a case uh, on Christmas Eve? Um, I haven't, but I've been – well, now that we're not doing ex-parties in court anymore, I can wait for my ex-party to to come back in my inbox from the comfort of my home. I've actually tried cases on Christmas Eve when I was a yeah. prosecutor. It's no fun. Nope. Uh, and I think one time I got called as a juror down here in L.A. on Christmas <laughs> Eve. And I'm going, are you kidding me? I walk in the courtroom, and sure enough, man, they're picking a jury and stuff like that. Fortunately, I got excluded, you know. Right. But, you know, take a pill, people. I mean, you know, a couple of days here and there would be pretty nice, right? Do you think the judges are happy about having to no, beat ex-parties absolutely. on well, Christmas Eve? It depends on the judge because there's certain <laughs> judges that don't have a life, man, and that's all they want to do. 
Anyways, what's your other story? Okay, and so then my other story um, is, I'm going to use it as a jumping off point about child support. Um, So Bethany Frankel, who is a real house, or was a real housewife of New York, um, she owns or started uh, Skinny Girl Brands, the the drink. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, Mm -hmm. Dawn, but it's wildly successful. She, um, She started the housewife show basically in a very small apartment but very skinny girls drinks does, Co- like cocktails that, so yeah. so there's like a low calorie uh booze out there mm-hmm. oh yeah it's oh. it's like a mixed margarita i think is what they started with and now there's a i could have sold that just to drink a little bit less for crying out loud but she did it i've okay. actually had it before right. they're actually really good obviously i'm good. not a skinny girl but you know <laughs> <laughs> but she's now very very wealthy um you know i mean lives in this massive yeah. just she's really just made it um, she's been in this very tumultuous divorce child custody case for a long time. Um, I think they were only together maybe a year after the baby was born. Um, and they had only been together a short amount of time before they even got married. Um, so basically the divorce is, is like three times, has taken three times as long as the, the relationship. Right. And most How of often it, have we seen that? Yeah. Yeah. And most of it is centered on the child. Um, they have one child. She's now, I think, 11, Bryn. Um, and just recently, December 8th, so yesterday, uh, she was ordered that she does not have to pay child support to her ex anymore. Huh? Which is very interesting, I know. So they are in New York, and I, you know, oh. I'm not sure if things are a little different there, but I thought it would be a good lesson to our California listeners that that is very unlikely to happen in California. Um, the reason they said that she doesn't have to pay support anymore is that she is the primary parent. The child is picked to live with her primarily. Um, and then opposing party, her ex-husband has basically just said he'll agree to this and the court ordered that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But in California, you might think um, if I have the children more, you know, I have them 75% of the time, why would I pay spou- uh, child support when he only has them 25% of the time? You know, that's not that's not the argument. It's an yeah. algorithm. And it's based on, you is know. Is that what it is? I was wondering what the guideline was. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the guideline for me is actually in the family code, too. Yeah. And yeah. it's a really, really unpleasant formula to read. It's nice to have the distance. You, yeah. re- you actually read it? Oh, oh yeah. my God, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's all based on, you know, everyone's income, and it does take into account the timeshare. But if one party is making a whole lot more than the other party, even if they have the children primarily, you can, they can still be forced to pay uh, child support. Mm-hmm. And then that, that brings me to my other celebrity, Kelly Clarkson, who is- I was hoping you would talk to her. Go ahead. <laughs> so she's going through a divorce right now. Um, as far as I saw, I think it was in July, she was ordered to pay for uh, $45,000 in child support- Ooh, Per month. Per month, and $150,000 in spousal support. This Ouch. is all temporary. Um, so sometimes that spouse, oftentimes the spousal support is a little higher than it would be normally, but still. Um, and that was based on her making $1.5 million a month and him no. making 10000 I think that the uh, it was actually higher at some point. That might be a modification because oh. I remember we did a podcast, I think, yeah. and it might have even been higher. But th- I'm seeing kind of a pattern here. I'm not seeing if you're seeing it, but, you know, we got two successful women. They're the earners. They're the primary parents. Uh, and, and in some ways, you know, they're – pulling all the weight but you know what they get divorced and then they got to pay mm-hmm. and i see that they don't like to pay as much as men don't like to pay have you noticed that i don't think anyone likes to okay. pay nobody likes to pay <laughs> nobody. <laughs> but i'm seeing these comments about kelly clarkson saying basically i mean there is some you know some of that kind of old-fashioned you know men should pay for themselves which i don't agree with um you know equality yeah. goes always um but some people are saying or some comments i've seen are saying you know kelly clarkson got cheated on and why should she have to pay her husband he cheated on her he's the one who wanted the divorce mm-hmm. uh, and i think the important point to bring up is you know in california especially when it comes to child support we're looking they the court is looking out for the children mm-hmm. so it's a no-fault state doesn't matter how badly he behaved, um, you know, to, or her to a certain extent. Of course, violence is different. But he cheats on you. You still have to pay the support if that's what the diso master says. It's all about what the yeah, children need. Right. It's not about, you know, who that's hurt not, each that's other. Just, that's just true for celebrities too. I mean, our clients yeah. sometimes or our our uh, consultations that we give wonder why they have to pay support when it was the other person that stepped out of the relationship that cheated, that did all the bad things hid money, everything like that. Well, they're the higher earner, and they got married without a premarital agreement. Guess what? You might be responsible for spousal support, mm-hmm. even if the other person was the one that was 
the wrongdoer, I suppose. So California doesn't pay attention to that yeah. at all. To no yeah. fault state, mm-hmm. and I think that's good. I I've read about other states where for spousal support, not for child support, though. Yeah, not yeah. right. Spousal support only. Yeah. Child support is has to be paid regardless. Yeah, it's pretty uniform across the country. Yeah. I just published it or posted an article a week or so ago about a f- another phenomenal – that's a woman's issue. <laughs> and basically it is is that there's a higher percentage of divorce among women who become more successful, promoted mm-hmm. or something like that. And that's, that's what reminds me here. You know, yeah. They strike it big, and boom, they're in a divorce. You know? And I, I just wonder if, you know, if, if there's any cause behind that that is, is consistent. You know, I mean, Clarkson, I mean, she's she's earning a million dollars a week or something like that. A uh, month? No, 1.5 a month. I think she's probably earning even more than that Holy now because she's taken over. Haven't she taken over <laughs> like uh, Ellen DeGeneres? De- 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 she her has name? her own Ellen's show. Generous, yeah. Ellen's show. Yeah, she has she, her own. But she's got that time slot there. So that's a big market. Right. You know, I would marry her. I would make her breakfast every morning. I would I would take her close to the cleaners. You know what? She could yell at me all the, all she wants, man. I mean, what is wrong with these, these guys? I don't I don't know. Okay. I wish I Maybe did. a masculinity <laughs> thing, right? I don't care. You know what? You know, dress me in a dress for crying out loud, man. <laughs> I mean, I love it. <laughs> okay. All right. So, anything else about, about our celebrities? That is it. Okay. Well, you did a, a great job of summarizing it, and uh, we've got to. Do this more often. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, we're, we're looking forward to 2022. Please bring us more. <laughs> more, more celebrity divorce stories in 2022 is going to be my uh, New Year's resolution <laughs> and Christmas wish. Okay. So. And remember, the doctor says, man, go see that movie. That, that, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.